Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and it might look a little bit different compared to the last episode, because we were in an Atlas station, but I, I uh, just figured out that if you save and quit in an Atlas station, they place you in the nearby uh, space station. So that's kind of different. Okay. So we were doing the Atlas uh, path in the last episode. We did a couple of stations, but now I think we need to jump back over to the Ghost in the Machine and locate Apollo's contact. We need to get our uh, base of operations up and going even more because we're going to be exploring some hardcore stuff and we need to make sure we're good to go. So, he's probably going to be in another uh, system. Let's see. Current mission. Where are we at? Up oh, all the way over here. And wait a minute. What? This is where my base was, I think. All right. Oh, no, no, no. It's right next door. Okay, so my base is in that system. And the uh, current mission is right next to it. All right. Well, let's go. Maybe that'll be a good, like, a uh, uh, a blessing in disguise. Because then I need to go back to my uh, my base, which is right next door. Which is awesome. Right next to the... Uh, right, right next to this system. I mean, you can't just use the teleporter, so it's not a big deal. Oh! Freighter battle! So, you will randomly run into a freighter battle like this in the game. So... Essentially, there are pirates that are attacking a freighter. If you save it, you can actually go talk to the crew and you can get a reward. And the first time, only the first time, they will let you have the freighter for free. Only on the first one, though. So keep in mind, if you really want to basically take advantage of that, don't claim a, uh, a freighter. Don't claim your first free one, quote unquote, until you find the freighter you want. Because the only, only the first one is free. So I'll show you what we do when we uh, when we finally take out all these pirates that are trying to take out the uh, the uh, the freighter here. Come on! And there's uh, there's different kind of battles as well. This is just a pirate uh, pirate ships that are attacking it. You can also run into a pirate dreadnought that's attacking a freighter as well. It's a huge freighter. So, you can run into that as well. Where are these guys at? Up oh, over here. And a, a secret to keep in mind, or at least info to keep in mind, is the more pirates that are attacking, the higher value the uh, freighter is going to be. So, if you pop in and there's only, like, one uh, one pirate attacking a freighter... Alright, this is a really low-level uh, freighter because they only need one pirate. If you come in and there's, like, eight of them, that means it probably has a good chance of being a high-value uh, freighter. Can't understand you at all, Corvax. The life form who must be the captain of this freighter looks greatly relieved. They gesture as if to welcome me aboard their vessel. So let's go land on their vessel. So it should mark the uh, entrance. There it is. Up, oh, I'm on the other side, so I gotta fly over. And you'll see that yellow or green or orangish uh, shield. This protects them from uh, shots from the outside. You have to get really close before you can attack the uh, the freighter if you want to attack a freighter. Like, if you want to become a pirate yourself, you need to get really close to the freighter because they do have shields that are basically impervious. You can wear them down over time, but it takes a lot of shots. So, easier just to fly in. All right, so here we go. First freighter battle. We won. Easy peasy. So you can, like old school and No Man's Sky players, you know, you have to take all the, this staircase all the way up to the bridge and go all the way up here. But there is, uh, they built in teleporters about a couple years ago, which is kind of nice. So this will take you right to the bridge. And done. There you are. Let's talk to the captain. Can't understand him at all. I know Aid and Corvax. Lights flicker rapidly across the life form's visor, and their head nods imperceptibly forwards. They seem to be showing me gratitude? They gesture towards the control panel in their frigate, or freighter, as if to suggest I can take command. So, at this point, you can say, hey, I want payment. You just pay me. Or, I can inspect their freighter, and you'll get both of these options all the time. But keep in mind, again, like I said earlier, the first one you save is free. So if you take it, like if I buy, if I take this freighter for free, I cannot get another free freighter. If I ignore it, like if I decline it, I can keep doing freighter battles and I will keep, they will keep being free until you accept your first one. 
so this is a sea level it has eh, it doesn't look really good i don't like this design either so freighters all have different designs you might run into some cool ones that are you know they have different uh looks to them so i'm not a, i'm not liking this one so i'm gonna leave i don't like the freighter instead i'm gonna take the reward so let's see and we're gonna request payment but now once you've requested payment you're kind of locked out the captain looks at me with respect. My actions in battle clearly made me made an impression. That's it. You cannot claim it. You cannot come back and buy it later on. That choice is final for this freighter. So after you, you've taken your reward or claimed your freighter, it's done. You cannot go back and do it again. I will salute you, buddy. Thank you for the reward. And this is a you know C-class freighter. Not really, really exciting. That's why I kind of declined it. If you want to do it really, really fast, however... You can, as soon as you land on the freighter after the battle, you can just look with your visor and you'll see it says over on the left-hand side, Captain Nimiter is the captain. Uh, race is Corvax. The fleet size is 12. That's how many frigates they have. But the more important thing is it's a freighter class at sea with 17 cargo and then 10 technology slots. That's what those numbers mean. And then it's worth seven million. So if I had to buy this freighter, I would have to spend seven million on it. But keep in mind that first one is free, so I would not have had to pay anything for that freighter. It would have been free. I declined it, so I'm going to keep going. And if you run into another freighter battle, we'll be able to go to that one for free as well, or we'll be able to get that one for free up until we claim it. All right, up until we claim one, and then that—that's when they turn over to being paid again. All right, we did some uh, some asteroids. Let's land here and talk to Apollo's uh, contact and see what the heck is going on. Also, we got some uh, we got some suspicious, suspicious packets of goods. We can see what we got here. Oh, look at that! We got we got a uh, Sentinel boundary map. That's important. Uh, vector compressor. We don't need that. A pearl. We can keep that for now, but we don't really need that. Um, we got a cargo bulkhead. We don't need that. So let's go to the starship on that one. So we don't need that yet. The cargo bulkhead is for a freighter. It's like a freighter upgrade. We don't have a freighter yet, so we cannot use it. Up, oh, and then there's a, uh, here's the Apollo contact. Secret Keeper. That's a perfect name. Life form, you arrived later than anticipated. Data has been obtained, exchanged, and utilized. New tools await you as instructed. Corvax has plans to update both base and exosuit. Where is your base sighted? What sort of hazard protection meets your needs? So, they, they will give you a hazard protection of your choosing. You can choose. It doesn't matter where your base is at. It's more of, hey, which one do you want to use? And as always, if you already have one installed, like if you already have a hot or a cold protection, don't ask for a hot one. You already have one. So I'm going to go with uh, radiation protection. Excellent choice, interloper. Leave here at once and expand your base. May it prove a mighty stronghold as you explore the universe. Gra. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's a Corvax and he's saying Gra. That's not normal. So Gra is uh, is a Viking of uh, <laughs> saying. Why are you talking like a Viking? Is he a Viking in disguise? All right. So we got salvage data. We got some blueprints as well to upgrade our base. So we need to go back to our base and start adding more uh, features to it. So we can go back to our station terminal. Oh, wait a minute. We got our milestone. We're increasing our milestones. I've met 10 aliens. Awesome. Well, let's go back to our base. So again, we can go back to any of our uh, space stations we've ever put our feet in on. We also have Jason's awesome base right here. Let's go back to it. And yeah, so they, they slowly do the, the, uh, the base building. They kind of introduce you to it. So this is a point where you can kind of break off. And if you really want to focus on base building, this is where you get your base building missions. And that's very, very beneficial because in the base building missions, you'll be able to, uh, to get an armor for multi-tools. You'll be able to get a uh, vehicle uh, desk for your exocraft. You'll be able to get a farmer... That way you can farm stuff if you want to do that. It's a whole cool thing, but it's a huge detour on a uh, different ways to do it. Uh, on a, a different missions. Place a construction, ter a construction terminal. The terminal is key to expanding your base, so construction terminal right here. We need 
chromatic metal 40 and we need 25 pure ferrite but we don't have the pure ferrite let's refine some pure ferrite oh, i don't even have a lot of, a lot of ferrite dust crap all right well let's go get some ferrite <laughs> pure ferrite since i don't even have a lot of dust anyway let's kind of go around a little bit collect some resources Again, I would always suggest going out and, you know, collecting resources as you're running around. I was not being a very good, uh, uh, traveler, so I need to actually go do that now. And it's, it's part of, like, eh, it's kind of boring to watch someone just go around and farm materials. At least I think. Maybe it's fun, because I can kind of chat to you guys about, you know, thoughts on life and everything like that. But for the most part, it's like, eh, farming is kind of... It's relaxing for me. I can run around and collect a whole bunch of materials all day because I can listen to music or a podcast or whatever. I can watch someone on YouTube or I'll put them on in the background. That way I can hear them at least. All right. We got some ferrite dust. Do we have any pure ferrite? we have any big rocks around here? I can get some pure ferrite from. Oh, I see some uh, condensed carbon. I'll take that. Condensed carbon is always good to have. I want to make sure I have enough materials because we're going to need to add some uh, upgrades to our base and I want to make sure I have enough stuff, enough building materials in order to do that. Scan some of these. Scan all these rocks. Oh, chromatic metal. Nice. That's a very good uh, secondary material. It's not very common. I mean, you, you do see it once in a while, but it's not like all over the place. So having chromatic metal, that's big. That's huge. I can just get a whole bunch of chromatic metal from like, these little rocks. Now, you know, it's only going to give me one or two per rock, but I mean, if you're knocking out a whole bunch of rocks, you're going to get a lot of... It adds up. It adds up after a while, so... Definitely beneficial to scan stuff and look for really good secondary materials like that. Pure ferrite dust? Okay, we need that. So that's what we need. And it gives me carbon as well, so I got pure ferrite and carbon. And remember, in our last episode, we actually installed a advanced mining laser that's why we can uh, mine the pure ferrite that is a more advanced material so we're going to need that for later on come on pop it and i try to keep my laser as hot as possible because the hotter it is the more close to overheating it is the faster you'll you'll mine stuff notice how look at this it's red and so i'm like blowing through all this stuff really really fast it's doing a lot of damage because it's hot but the disadvantage is you can overheat really easy. So you got to do that in like a little mini game of trying to keep it hot. Trying to keep it hot. All right. We should be good now. We should be all set, ready to go. Hello. Did I scan you guys? I did not. Let's scan you. I need to get some scanner upgrades. Did I already have that? I do not have a scanner upgrade. We need some scanner upgrades. That way I can... Uh, I can start uh, getting some money, more money from these scans. Let's pop in some more fuel here. There we go. We got another uh, 50 hours of uh, power. All right. So now we need to make a what? Oh, yeah. Construction terminal. I forgot. So we have our chromatic metal, 40 and 25 pure ferrite. Let's put his desk over here. So we have a construction terminal, but we don't have anyone to work it. The construction terminal requires a skilled overseer for operation. You can recruit overseers in the space stations. So we need to go hire an overseer now. So let's go to the space station and check it out. And remember, every position is a different race of aliens. So the overseer is always going to be a GEC. If you're not in a GEC system, it'll tell you, hey, your overseer is not in this system. You need to go to another system. You know? Or, like, uh, for the scientist. You can you can get a base scientist. You're going to need a Corvax for that. And so, again, you need to go make sure you're in a Corvax system. They'll tell you, hey, as long as you have your mission highlighted, it will tell you, hey, go over here and talk to this alien because this is going to be the one you want. But you don't have to. If you don't like the uh, alien that they point to, they say, hey, you know, this is your overseer, and you're like, eh. This, uh, this, uh, Gek looks a little fishy. I don't know if I trust them. You can go to a different one if you'd like. You don't have to choose this one. So let's go see how this guy's doing. Where are you at, buddy? Uh. 
Is it really you? Forgive me, I've been searching for such a long time. I am contracted to aid you in this and every cycle. Don't worry, everything was paid for long, long ago. It's all quite above board. I don't know about that. As the stranger speaks, a smell assaults me. A pheromone infesting my brain. Giving me memories of places I've never visited, of actions I've never taken. Of myself in a mirror, aged and alone. Of this geck cradling their fallen brethren. Of a bargain made many years from now. A contract signed across the cosmos. The vision ends and the overseer remains. The overseer promises to expand my base, allowing me to recruit other workers. They require a construction terminal to get started. So here's where you say you can decline the offer and you'll find another one in another system. Or you can hire this one. I like his armor, that blue metal armor looks really really cool so i'm gonna hire him there's something compelling about this geck they shall feel at home in my home i will be at my station before you know it see you soon friend all right so now they're gonna go right back to the construction terminal that we built at our base so before i leave i'm gonna head over here i'm gonna look around for stuff let's see if we can buy some more materials like ferrite dust i can buy all that we're going to need some uh, cobalt, so I'm going to buy some of the stuff that I think we'll need. You know, microprocessors are always important. So, you don't really need rusted metal because you can just turn that into ferrite dust. Why buy the rusted metal when you can just get the ferrite dust already? Um, yeah, think it okay. Here we go. So now, what we can do is we have to head down to our base again. That way we can uh, go talk to the overseer at his uh, station and get our uh, upgrades going for our base. Go back to our base. Boom. There we go. So yeah, and you're, you're going to be popping back and forth a little bit like this, so just get used to the teleporters and going through and going back to your base or back to a... Uh, a space station. They're very, very convenient. And even if you don't have a teleporter at your base, you can teleport to your base. You just can't leave by a teleporter because you don't have one. Up here he is. Hello, attendant. You have so much to learn and so much to see, and this place will be our home amidst the infinite. Take this glass and let starlight flood into our jolly home. So now we have glass. We know how to make it now. We Look at it. We're learning blueprints. We know how to make it. We can use frost crystals or you can use silicate powder, the dirt, basically, to refine into glass. Everything pours through glass in the end. But there's time enough for that. There are other things we have to do. If you prepare chromatic metal, I will use it to calibrate a science terminal suitable for a Corvax entity. The Corvax have suffered terribly at the hands of my people. Be kind to them, I beg of you. The Overseer asks me to gather chromatic metal in preparation for the recruitment of a Corvax scientist. Well, let's do it. Agent is already making themselves useful. A science terminal, a new Corvax guest, and all for just a handful of chromatic metal. So we should have it. So we have a whole bunch of chromatic metal. Let me look at my, my ship. Oh yeah, we have 600, so we should be good. So just wait for a second. Again, No Man's Sky has to register that you have it. There we go. It's checked off. And if you don't remember, you can make chromatic metal by getting copper and refining it in your refiner into chromatic metal. So now it's registered that I've got it. Let's talk to the overseer. There you are again, traveler. I am sure you have the required materials this time. The overseer speaks strangely, implying that we have performed this encounter before but I have no memory of such meetings. I asked who paid them for this service and they are they are performing for me. They laugh and claim that my child did many years from now. I do not know what they are talking about. The overseer asks me for the chromatic metal. All right, that's kind of weird. So my child paid for services that I'm using now? That's kind of weird. I give him the chromatic metal. Perfect friend, I knew you would succeed. Just when I need to finish the science terminal plans. So now we know how to make a science terminal. We need chromatic metal and magnetized ferrite. That's another blueprint we got for free. We have littered the universe in our greed, Traveler. This planet is no exception, but there is much that can be done with the litter. Make your way to an abandoned structure and harvest the data from their terminals. 
I shall use it to fashion us a plan for a storage container. Attendant is reflective for a gek. They almost seem to regret the greed that the that characterizes their people. They wish to make something new from the remains of the old. Is this just greed in disguise or something else? Whatever their motive, the overseer claims I will find data for a storage container blueprint in a nearby structure. All right, let's do it. You won't regret it, friend. I've marked the site that seems to be ripe for exploration. But before we go, we need to make a science terminal now that we've have that. So we have the materials. We need 40 chromatic metal and 25 magnetized ferrite. So we'll put them right next to the portal. But we don't have a, we don't have a Corvax. The science terminal requires a skilled scientist for operation. You can recruit scientists in space stations with Corvax controlled systems because he's a Corvax. So now we're getting different missions. So we got to go through here. So we're going to do the uh, expanding our base. Search the abandoned building. This is the mission that the overseer gave us. So anytime you want to switch it out, you can go, you know, scientific research, base computer archives, all of this stuff. Let's do base computer archives since we're here. Where's my uh, base? Where's my computer at? There it is. Automated archive recovery in progress. Data recovered 6%. New data available. Well, let's search the archives. Entry 4925X follows. Found additional buried technology modules. Construction proceeding smoothly. Recent expedition yielded something. Copying data to something. Additional data available. Construct construction logs recovered. Blueprints assembled and prepared for download. Well, let's, let's get them. Uh, base technology data extracted. Downloading plans. Storage container plans restored. Wait a minute. I got... Wait, wait, what? Storage containers. There we go. Isn't that what the uh, Gek was supposed to give me? The uh, or, or Overseer? Readable archive retrieval complete. Beginning defragmentation of next segment. So now, in order to complete, keep going in our base building mission, we need to build our containers. But if we switch over to the... Uh, overseer missions. We need to go to an abandoned system or abandoned station. So let's go do that real fast. Search for an abandoned uh, data. I'm going to do a scan. There we go. Coordinates received. Where is this uh, building at? Up over here. Oh my god, it's like right here. Like right next door. I like it. Up, oh, abandoned building. So it's marking there, but that, that's the target sweeper location. This is probably the building right here. So let's land over here. So this is an abandoned building. These are really, really cool for storyline lore, but also you can make a lot of nanites and you can make a lot of money by popping these eggs. I think we've done this before, but just as a refresher, if you attack these eggs, enemies will come out and try to stop you. So be prepared for that. What you can do if you don't want to deal with them is... You can just dig underneath them. Because when you when you crack open the eggs, they have a, an item that falls out of them. So if you dig a hole down here, and then kind of clear it up, the enemies can't come down to get you, but the eggs will fall towards you. So we do this. Oh no, can I not get it? Let me open it up, that way the dirt's not blocking me. Come on, let me do it. There it is, boom. Oh no, it did not, okay. It should be falling, but I guess ooh, maybe they fixed it. Let's look. Oh, they might have fixed it to where it doesn't fall through the ground. Oh, no. That's not good. Well, at least you, you can see the enemies aren't going to attack me. See, they kind of glitch out. They don't know how to get underground. So they're just glitched out. So you don't need to worry about them coming and getting you. But I think they fixed the, uh, the uh, larval cores. It used to be you could just pop the eggs like this. And it would just have them fall to you. But it looks like they put in a hitbox. That way you can't do that, dang it. So not a big deal. What I, what I generally do is... I will just... Pop them like this and run around. And just stay away from the enemies. The, uh, the monsters. Oh god, look at that. That was a huge hit. Oh my god. So you just run around. If you, as long as you don't stand still, they really generally don't get you. They've definitely nerfed them. Before, back in the day, 
Biological horrors would like decimate you in a second. They would just attack you constantly. Now they've kind of slowed down. They don't they don't attack as much, and also they need to be really close to you, so again, just keep moving. And you should be good to go. So you just do that. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. And we're just picking up all of these larval cores. So they are very, very valuable. That's why uh, they're protected by these uh, biological horrors. So, and if you want to, you could always pull out your visor and look. And it'll show you exactly where all the eggs are. So I know there's three right there. Like, keep, you know, keep moving. But yeah, I know there's three there. So you can always see these symbols for the eggs. You can kind of look around and go, okay, there's some eggs over here. Grab these uh, larval cores. Got it, got it, got it. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful. Any more eggs around here? Yep, over there. So I'm going to try to get all of them. That way we have all the eggs from this area. So you can see how many you on average would get. So they're going to be different amounts. You know, they're all randomized. So sometimes you'll get a lot. Sometimes you won't get so much. Just because of, you know, the luck of the draw. Let me do this. And as long as you keep attacking these eggs, they will... The enemies will keep spawning and keep coming around. So you can, if you want to. You can attack them and kill them. But they'll just keep spawning more and more until you leave the eggs alone. So the only way for them to go away is to leave the eggs alone. And I think it's about a minute, maybe two minutes before they leave you alone. Before they give up and say, okay, now you're good. I think we got all the eggs here. Let me look. Yep, we don't see any more red egg symbols, so we're good. So the other thing you can do is to get a, get away from them. Go inside. You don't need to go down, you know, dig a hole and hide in the hole. Just get inside because they can't enter buildings as well. So you're good on the inside. Let's learn some words here from the encyclopedia. Yes. Open up all these random uh, containers to get some stuff. Oh, we have a uh, we have a damaged machinery. Let's see if we can get some upgrade out of this. And we got nanites. Yep, we got nanites. That's okay. That's most most of the time. I'm going to say like 80% of the time you get nanites. So it's not a big deal. It's always nice to get an upgrade, but uh, not always going to happen. So yeah, now the uh, now all the biological order, the monsters, are uh, they're gone. They left me alone. So let's uh, uh, access this terminal, the forgotten terminal. Oh, we have trash in here. Let's get rid of it. User identified, terminal active, accessing schematics. The place the overseer has led me to has long since fallen into disrepair. Its panels are buried beneath the same oily, pulsating fauna that I have seen before in long abandoned buildings. The air is fetid and damp. I power up the terminal with the little hope of success, but to my, sus my surprise, it buzzes noisily and springs to life. Let's analyze the schematics. My overseer's intuition has served me well so far. I shall have to trust that these schematics contain the required data. So now we have to bring it back to the overseer. So yeah. Everyone's all calm down, chill. Oh, there's a traitor! So if you see any of these green markers, this is a traitor that's landed. A landed pilot. They will trade items with you, but they don't stick around for very long. So you got to talk to them quickly. Grah. Yeah, that's a Viking. Interloper is weak. Viking, I guess, strong. Let's say uh, you can buy a ship if you'd like, or we could just offer to trade. And they will have black market upgrades. So these are randomized. These are these can be the best, but they can also be the worst upgrades in the game because they are randomized, completely randomized. So you can take a chance, a gamble on them, and I can buy this mining beam upgrade, but there's no guarantee that it's going to be good. I can do a, sus a suspicious scanner upgrade. I do need to get that one. So let's do that one. So there's no identification. It's randomized. Can be good. Can be bad. You never know. We can also sell stuff. Now the problem is he will not buy anything for nanites. He can only buy your regular items. Even though he sells upgrades, he does not buy upgrades. So just if you have some stuff to sell, like our larval, larval cores, we can make a million off of it. But 
You don't want to do that just yet. You don't want to do that just yet. Because we can actually get more nanites than the uh, money. So we got our upgrade from him. Thank you. That's a kind of cool ship. I don't like the colors on it, but it looks pretty cool. But okay, so we had our upgrade out of there. Where's our upgrade? Here we go. There's our scanning upgrade. Now if we put it in... I didn't have any before. Now it's the floral analysis and scan radius. That's like a C level upgrade. So I got a C class upgrade. Not bad, but not great. You know, and again, they are randomized, so... Sometimes you get a really good, like it's better than an S class, which is crazy. It's very rare that you do that, but it is possible. And that's why it's always useful. If you have extra uh, nanites to spend, get as many of those black market upgrades as you possibly can, because they can really, really make the difference. That one that I got is not so great. So yeah, it's okay. So we picked up all those, uh, those uh, larval cores. We got 10, 26 of them, 26 larval cores. Now you'll notice one stack of 10 will sell for 698,000 uh, units, which is a lot of money. Or if I wanted to, I could actually make nanites out of that, which are more rare to come by. So it's a good way to farm nanites, refine them. So if you slap in your uh, larval cores, let's get a group of 10. 10 larval cores will turn into 500 nanites. So one larval core turns into 50, and it takes like no time at all. Look at that. Boom. Done and done. Easy peasy. So I would always recommend if you're going to uh, farm the larval cores from the eggs, turn them into nanites. This is harder to get, and so you can make a ton of nanites this way. You can make money other ways, but it's really hard to farm nanites. It's hard to farm nanites. But if you needed to, like if you needed the cash for whatever, you need to buy some materials or whatever, an upgrade, you could totally do that as well. Let's talk to the overseer. We got the uh, blueprint. You are back. I'm so glad, friend. I will extract the storage blueprint as soon as I have the data. It is good to see the Gek is so invested in the success of our home. They are clearly happy to see me energized for the task at hand. Let's give them the data. Here is your blueprint, as promised. A trivial task. Their code was just sitting there to be manipulated. So now I've, I've got all the storage containers. So I unlocked the blueprint for one storage container, but the overseer gave it me all of the storage containers. That's awesome. Now then, do you think, friend, that we should put that science terminal to use? Fill our home with the clicks and lights of the Cormax? It would be so lovely. The Overseer feels the base would benefit from a Corvax scientist. They would like to see good use made of the blueprint they worked so hard on. Yeah, I agree. I'm so glad we had this chat, friend. So now it is time to go get a Corvax scientist for our terminal. So hopefully you guys like this episode. If you did, hit that like button. And in the next episode, we will be getting our scientist and doing some science missions for our base. That way we can get that going. So I will see you guys then.